So up next is Danny van Vieren. It's time to get into one of the last workshops for the day. Most of us dread having to speak about wills, as it might seem like we're inviting death, but it is incredibly important to ensure your legacy is left in the right hands. Our next workshop host is a business development consultant for Momentum Trust and passionate about all aspects of financial planning. Please help me welcome Danny van Vieren as she speaks about wills and all its taboos. Thank you, Sherlyn, and thank you to everyone viewing. I know it might be the graveyard shift, but this is definitely a workshop that is important to everyone. Today we're speaking on wills for women with momentum, and we have to talk about this even though we don't want to. My name is Danielle van Vieren, and everyone actually calls me Danny. I am my mother's firstborn, and I share the same first name as my late grandfather, and my my uncle, and apart from the obvious fact that I am a female, I was the first woman in my family to have a last will and testament. And between the three Daniels, I was the first to have a legally executable last will. And those are two very, very different concepts. So today we'll be talking about wills and how important they are, but the question really is, how many of you at home are sharing the same story that I had many years ago? How many of your stories resonate with my story? And how many of you are willing and prepared to take a step to do a first for your family as well? The goal for today is to talk about wills and it who equipped you to have that conversation, to take control of the situation and to encourage even more people going forward to talk about wills and about taking control of your legacy. So when it comes to wills, there are a lot of things that we can talk about, but we need to start with why wills. So when it comes to the discussion, it's about the confidence, it's about encouraging ourselves to realize what a will is about. And contrary to other thoughts that we might have when it comes to our personal circumstances, many believe the will is only for someone who is wealthy or who has a lot of assets or net worth, who have a lot of structures within their estate planning, or perhaps who have wealth abroad or complex business entities, for example. And that is absolutely not the case. It's not about what you're worth or what you're not worth, but it's more about taking control of the legacy that you have created and the one that you will leave behind. And that is the theme for many this year, and I hope going forward that I can encourage you and equip you to have that conversation. When it comes to discussing your will, you need to think of your personal circumstance. And I want to encourage you to take this home, to make it personal, to talk about the will simply because it is a right that is afforded to you as a South African. It is not a right that we as women specifically had to fight for, and it is allowed for every person to actually go out and draft a will. You cannot continue living without a a valid, legally executable will. And this is for many reasons, because it is a life-altering decision. The reason why I say life-altering is because in my experience in the industry, we've realized that many families are faced with the finality of death and with further issues relating to missing wills, invalid wills, non-existent wills. Perhaps there are family feuds and legal drama that is involved that no one wants to find themselves in the middle of. Perhaps it's even something that touches your pocket, those unexpected death costs or unexpected family members that creep up as the estate comes to fruition. In addition to this, we also look at the loss of assets and, again, the fighting of assets. So whether it's assets lost or assets sold, the goal is to have that conversation, to talk about your legacy, because it is about a lot more than avoiding the conversation for other people's sake, but it's more about having the conversation for your own sake. And there are various reasons why 
we don't have these conversations. It could be culturally, it could be from an educational perspective, but again, I want to hone down on a focus point today, which is the fact that having a last will and testament is about having control over the legacy that you have created, the one that you will leave behind. And it also is about the people you leave behind, the emotional, financial, and legal position that you leave them in when you are no longer around. And again, it's about education. We want to show clients and we want to show fellow colleagues and family members why it is important to have that will. And we're going to start with the first point amongst a lot of other points, which is the fact that we as South Africans are entitled to and have access to the, the Wills Act. And the Wills Act allows for freedom of testation. And South Africa is one of the few countries that actually has and enjoys freedom of testation. So what is freedom of testation? Freedom of testation is essentially the enablement to decide to whom and how your estate is distributed. And it is within your right, it is a unique privilege and right to make those decisions. So unlike other countries in the world, we have the opportunity to decide what happens to our legacy, to take control of that decision, and to execute it by means of nominating the correct executor and other features that we're going to go through today as well. When it comes to freedom of testation, it's important to know that this is our right. And failing the execution of drafting a will means that we will not have the opportunity, nor our family members, to decide and execute according to our personal preferences and wishes. So without a will, the law of intestate succession comes into play. And that basically means that the law decides for you. Your family doesn't have a say. If you're not there anymore, it means that the law of intestate succession applies. And again, that means that it doesn't take into consideration your personal wishes, it doesn't take into consideration your personal circumstances. So why don't we do wills? If we look at statistics, we've realized over the years that people aren't having those conversations, and again, for various reasons. But if you look at the scary statistic of the fact that over 70% of working South Africans today do not have valid wills, and we're not even talking about legally executable wills, we come to ask, if we have the freedom, if we have the privilege and the right to decide what happens to our legacy, why aren't we doing that? And there are various professionals in the market who have come out and expressed their input and their views, and we look at statistics, but the reality is it boils down to one main component, and that is that we don't know what we don't know. So there could be various reasons, but this is the key point. So if I say it slowly, we do not know what we do not know. And if we knew more, especially when it comes to succession planning, we would want to act immediately and make sure we take control of our legacy. What is it that we, and specifically the theme women, do not know that we should know? Various things, and we're going to go through today as an encouragement to have that conversation. Firstly, let's start with a term that many of us don't know about, and that is the, the word for a woman who drafts a will, and that is called a testatrix. So a testatrix is someone, a woman, who goes out and gets a will drafted. You're being a testatrix, you must note that there are various rules around wills. Wills are a legal document, it has legal prescriptions, and although we have the freedom of testation, it is important to understand that there may be few limitations on that freedom of testation, and we're going to go through some of it today. A testatrix must note the requirements for a will, and they are very straightforward. It's very important to ensure that you follow these prescriptions 
prescribed rules because that will ensure the document is actually legally valid. A test of chicks must be older than 16 years to execute on the drafting of her will. She must be mentally capable to understand the nature and consequences of her actions. And she must ensure that the will is clear and not vague, that it is in writing. Unfortunately, our Wills Act is quite archaic, so it doesn't allow for electronic or e-wills just yet, but we have to make sure that we follow those prescriptions. Every single page of your will needs to be signed by the testatrix. And when signing, you actually have to sign it in the presence of two competent witnesses who are older than 14 years old. In practice, we encourage that those witnesses actually sign every single page, but the law requires them to sign the last page. These witnesses are there to witness the will, the signing of the will, not to read the content, because a will is still very personal. It is your final wishes and your final direction. So they are only there to witness you putting pen to paper. And Lastly, it is important to remember to date your will. And if you can, write the location. Perhaps there are various different wills that you have and you didn't burn them or destroy them, and now you have the executor in a situation where he has multiple wills for Danny. No one knows which one is the last one, and that's why it's so important to date it. Be careful when amending your will. So, Amending your will is obviously very important. Life changes, things happen, but when you amend your will, it needs to f sit and, and uh, address the same requirements that the Wills Act has set out. Remember to review and update it regularly as life changes, but to also review your estate plan. They go hand in hand. In the event of a divorce, it is important to update your will ASAP, unless you want your ex to inherit. We have a three-month grace period to amend our wills, and there are different rules around that as well. Consider a living will. So many clients and, and, and colleagues are not familiar with a living will, but it is not regulated in terms of and uh, recognized in terms of statutory law in South Africa, but it is something, a wish, a final wish with regards to your views on artificial life support if you are no longer able to make that decision for yourself. Be mindful of common law limitations with regards to your freedom of testation. So it must be lawful legal, it must be moral and practical, so no funny business. Remember that there are various laws and regulations that impact how your will and your assets are actually handled. And again, I will touch on this later, but you need to speak to the right people to ensure that it aligns with your wishes. Consider a foreign will for your foreign immovable property and your foreign business shares. And remember that your estate has a common law obligation to support any minor or financially dependent child. Maybe you have a child at home that just simply hasn't moved out yet. Take that in mind. Be mindful of the effect of divorce and maintenance orders. Times have changed. Women are paying maintenance. If we think recently, Kelly Clarkson, she pays her spouse and for the support of him and the children up to 2.8 million rand a month in maintenance. So be mindful of those orders. Consider a testamentary trust to protect and safeguard the inheritance of your children, minor children, unrehabilitated insolvents, persons with special needs, or to safeguard it from your spouse. And remember that the surviving spouse may have a claim against your estate. Be very mindful of your marital regime. It will impact your estate planning and it will impact your wishes. And note, especially clients who are, and, and colleagues and family members that you know are married in community of property, take a little bit deeper and understand what that means. It means that when you are married in community of property, you have one joint estate and you share equally in those assets and those liabilities, even if you're not heavy on the credit card. 
Avoid too many codicils, which is essentially annexures to your will, will amendments. Many times a client would have their first wills drafted in 2010, for example, and every year they would change it and just add an annexure. It causes confusion and you might have the risk of misinterpretation, so be mindful of that. Remember to nominate an appropriate guardian to take care of your children and the same applies for an appropriate trustee to safeguard the inheritance of your children or whoever it is that is a beneficiary of the trust. Very important, choose the right and competent executor, someone or an entity like a trust company, for example, that specializes and has a lot of experience in fiduciary law to ensure that your wishes are executed as efficiently as possible without unnecessary delay or costs. And maybe we should have started with this, avoid intestate succession at all costs. The law decides for you. Some of us cannot afford to pass on without a will. And remember, there are tax savings when you structure your estate planning correctly or if you leave everything to your surviving spouse. And consider limited interests. There are a few that you can consider. And lastly, or oh no, I think I've got two more to go, make it easy for everyone and save time. Consider a life file. Collate all the relevant documentation. Maybe the more obvious things like your will, your marriage certificate, birth certificate. Perhaps you have an antinuptial agreement. Any updated tax information, insurance, funeral, con, home insurance, documentation, your title deed. Perhaps you have an inter vivos trust, your trust deed, vehicle and firearm documentation, to name a few. But let's take it even further. What about your login information, internet banking, cryptocurrency, profile and password, maybe your internet like your Instagram, your social media platforms, your Facebook page, whatever the case may be, and keep it safe. File it with your executor in a safe vault where no one can access it until it is the right time. Create and preserve wealth through effective estate planning. Tools and solutions, products and vehicles that are available, like the exclusive Momentum Estate Provider Benefit that accounts for all your estate and trust needs. And lastly, very important, speak to a financial advisor about holistic estate planning. Every testatrix has different personal requirements and circumstances. And a financial advisor can analyze that to make you a tailor-made estate plan that fits you like a glove. And then, now that you know what you do know, and there's so much more still to find out, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to take control and own your legacy? Are you going to get that will? The question is how, where do we go? How much does it cost? Do I have to see an attorney? There are various different platforms available and with Momentum Trust, we have a industry leading worldwide option for free online wills generations. It is a free platform for everyone because at Momentum Trust, we believe that every person should have access to a free professional platform to provide them with a will. But let's take it further. Having a last will and testament is important for various reasons, but having a legally executable will is the difference. And having a legal executable will means that your wishes can be given effect to, that what you intend actually does happen. And that's why it is imperative that you speak to a financial advisor or a professional who can do holistic succession planning for you to help you take ownership of your legacy, take ownership of the outcome of the estate that you have one day when the time does come, and to ensure that your wishes are executed accordingly. Okay, there are various different options, but this is the first step. I'm going to move over to Sherlyn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Danny. This really does put things into perspective. What's that sexy T word you were throwing Testatrix. around? Testatrix. 
Testatrix. Testatrix. I'm going to add that to my <laughs> bio. Uh, many people saying you are looking gorgeous and also saying, I'm too poor. Should I really get a will? Oh, it's a pity that people still feel that way, Sherlyn. I get that question often. Why should I have a will? I don't have much. Mm -hmm. I just have basic assets. At the end of the day, Personally, I see a will as a constitutional right. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have an ID, the fact that you have an ID number, the fact that you are a South African citizen mm -hmm. entitles you to have that last will and testament. And it's never too late. You can have the first step and be the first person to do so today. I love that. So one, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so then when is the right time to get a will? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I so, thought it's never too late. I always say that a will can be done immediately. Mm -hmm. It can. With Momentum Trust, we have this free platform to everyone. But it's more important to discuss with a financial advisor. So when you realize and you have that switch mentally that this is something I need, this is something I deserve, this mm -hmm. is my right, mm -hmm. that is something that should spark a fire and get you to go and see someone or perhaps even start today during lunch, do it online. Mm -hmm. Many people also want to know, how do I speak to my family about yeah. getting a will? Who needs to know? I think it starts with education, Sherlyn. I think it's a matter of researching a little bit about what the law says and talking to a financial advisor who can lead you, perhaps not a financial advisor, perhaps just a confidant who can lead you to hear, what is it that Danny wants? What is the solution that will work for Danny? And I want to then go and execute it by drafting the will. And remember, Sherlyn, your will is very personal. Mm -hmm. Yes, it impacts your family, but it shouldn't impact your view. And you should have that will irrespective of how your family feels. And the beginning is really really about educating yourself, getting comfortable with it, and once it's done, you'll have the best peace of mind to go out and express it to your family. Okay, so Danny, you've convinced us. We are all getting wills. How do we ensure that we are talking to the right people? I mean, something like a will, it's not something mm -hmm. you want to get wrong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And although we have an online platform, I believe it's important to speak to people who specialize in that, like myself, for example. And there are financial advisors who specialize in it. There are attorneys, there are tax practitioners, there are a, a myriad of people to approach when it comes to your will. I think the best would start with reading what this website sets out for you. What does it say? What did I not know? What did I learn today? And to go and speak to someone you can trust, but again, someone who's a specialist. You want to place your will, your estate, your family mm -hmm. in the right hands. Mm -hmm. And I love how you call the will, it's like your last say. Yes. You might have passed, but you still get to have things executed your way. Absolutely. I think when it comes to succession planning, we avoid it because it feels too tough. Mm. It feels too difficult. It's scary. Isn't it an acceleration of death? Absolutely not. It is an encouragement of peace of mind. And it also brings about change in your family. I'd rather have that conversation knowing that things will flow smoothly, not for myself, but for my family, as opposed to maybe looking in hindsight thinking, is is that what I wanted? Is that what my family member wanted? And again, like you said, it's about your legacy. It's about owning it and taking control of what's important to you. Mm -hmm. uh, one woman saying, I'm currently happily married, but how do I ensure that what happened to Adele does not happen to me? <laughs> I think the best would be to go and speak to someone who is not your spouse. Mm -hmm. It's important as women to be involved in the financial planning of our spouse, whether our spouse is a female or a male. It is mm -hmm. imperative that we take ownership of things that impact us, especially where you have, for example, someone who is married in community of property, one joint estate, mom doesn't know everything that's happening, the finances, because we can take dad's word for it, for example, or other 
mom's word for it. Mm -hmm. The end of the day, if it impacts you, it's a conversation you need to have. You have to speak to someone about it. And the great thing about the, pla the financial planning platforms available to South Africans with Momentum Financial Advisors is that you can go to that person, they can analyze everything for you and put you in a better position of understanding what is really happening with your financial planning and how do we curb any issues that could creep up even if it's not something you created. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Danny. Thank you for having We're me. We're about to take a lunch break, but while you stretch your legs, water your plants, make some coffee, and do whatever you need to do, I'll be giving away some prizes to our social media audience. Now let's see who's been engaging. Congratulations to Pumeza underscore SHH, Pumeza Langa. Also, big congratulations to Kanyisa Ndlebe at Ukanyi underscore N. You've won yourselves a thousand rand loot voucher. Please DM us your claim to claim your prize. To the rest of you, keep tagging and sharing, and you could also win some incredible prizes. Come to think of it, now is the perfect time to head over to momentum.co.za to draft that will and keep the legacy of your unstoppable success intact. Let's have a little bit of a break. We'll be back in just a bit. I started my business in 2018. I saw the lack of coffee shops around Midrand. I love cooking, I love coffee, and I really wanted a place that is serene and very tranquil. So I decided that I'll have this coffee shop at the heart and soul of Midrand. I want the Tree Garden to be a household name. So the biggest challenge as a young black entrepreneur has been getting funding to get access to networks. Also my age, when I started my business, I was 21. I had to prove myself five times more than my male competitors. I think you need to be resilient and you need to be determined. Just do things on your own pace. Don't let the negativity of the world weigh you down. Even now, I'm still struggling with all the labels. If someone says you're not good enough, it's a bit difficult to remove yourself from thinking like that. I can measure my success with the lives I've changed, with the mentorship and the PR that we'll be getting from this competition. It will help me reach that goal. The best advice I've received is whenever you're faced with a choice, always choose in favor of your passion because your passion will never lead you astray. When people call me unstoppable, it means I am brave, I am fearless, I am courageous, and I'm great. <laughs> I own my success. We decided to embark on this journey because we realized that there was a 
crisis of load shedding and power cuts. We offer various solar related products from your low entry floodlights all the way to your high end full house solar systems. There was a huge interest from our clients in understanding how renewable energy works. What we are offering is not a want but a need. As young women of color in a white male dominated technical industry, no one takes us seriously. That has been one of the biggest challenges that we face. And we are saying that we are more than capable. The advice that I'd like to share with my fellow entrepreneurs, start that business. You knock on doors that are not open for you. Continue getting that rejection. That's the only way that you'll get to actually see how powerful you are. We believe that good advice is very important, especially when it comes from the right people. And with the right knowledge, we'll be able to break those barriers to say that not only men should be in this business, but women as well can overtake. I would define success as celebrating the small wins. Whenever we secure a client or a big contract, like we have a thing, you go, go team! <laughs> Unstoppable is who we are. We are here to break boundaries. Yes. Yeah. Taking our future into our hands and saying that whatever our backgrounds are does not determine our future. Women who own the success become unstoppable. Unstoppable is who we are. We are here to break boundaries. Yes. Yeah. When I feel strongly about something, nothing can stop me. When people call me unstoppable, it means I am fearless. I own my success. When we own our success, we become unstoppable. My success is unstoppable.
Nursery Organic started exactly three years ago and why it was started was because of the frustration that I had as a black woman feeling that there weren't that many options in the market for quality, thoughtfully made products. So some of the biggest challenges in hair care for black people specifically was feeling that there weren't enough options. Just the idea of options alone sounds so shallow or casual, but it's real. And I wanted black women to have that kind of thing. We have just launched in two big retailers across South Africa, Botswana and Namibia. When I started Masodi Organics, the vision was I wanted to be accessible. I wanted to go beyond just the borders of South Africa. I want Masodi to go global and to see this dream and vision come to life is definitely something that's just crazy. Masodi Organics was named after my mother who is the most, um, you know, impactful woman in my life. She was one of the first women leaders that I've seen in my life. My mother gave me the best advice. She would call me and say, just keep moving forward. And these are words that come to me each time the going gets tough. The two biggest challenges I found were funding on the one hand and the penalty of solving problems that are aimed at alleviating minority groups. People ask you, what do you do? You say, I make cosmetics. It's like, oh, another one. So that was a huge barrier for us. I'm very excited about the mentorship program. It's very difficult to carve out time and say, this is big picture time. So I'm really excited about that. Owning my success means whatever I desire, whatever I'm doing is coming from an authentic place within myself. My success is unstoppable. <laughs>